Extreme hobby, durability and rivalry. Powiedz Alan, no jak tam twoje wrażenia po pobycie w Polsce? No musieliśmy zmienić te twoje nastawienie, wszystkie te twoje błędy tobie wytknąć i jak gdyby zrobić od nowa twoje jiu-jitsu, czujesz się teraz lepszy? Yeah, you know, I, I heard, I heard that, you know, I was in Sweden, you know, and with the friends, drinking, you know, and then didn't have nothing to do, was a little bit depressed after all my losses, you know, and then I was saying to myself, who can help me now? And then I was Googling best BJJ fighters in the planet. And then the first country where pops out was Poland. Then I say to myself, shit, I have to go right now. You know, I wait my girlfriend and my son go to bed to sleep. I pack everything. My son have one small pig that he put coins in. I break this, took all the coins, run to the airport, buy a ticket and came here to train with you guys so you guys could help me to get good in BJJ. Rozumiem, że możemy teraz spodziewać się przypływu, napływu tych czołowych zawodników z Brazylii. Będziesz nas reklamował. Yes, absolutely. You know, I gonna I gonna get back now to the hotel. I'm gonna ride to Bushesha, Rodolfo, Leandro Lo, Durinho. Me, our brothers, all those guys that think that they are good, they are missing out. They have to come in here to get better. Braulio Stima, Vito, Roger Grace is just beside here in England, you know. They really need your advice, guys. So that's what I recommend. Rozumiem, że przed następnymi mistrzostwami, do których się przygotowujesz, na pewno pokażesz niesamowitą formę, pewnie drugą młodość, również przyjdziesz przygotowywać się do nas. Yes, yeah, I, I definitely want to come here. And I'm even thinking about not even go back anymore, you know, not to Sweden, not to Brazil. You know, I found a job here, whatever, whatever job I have, so I can support myself and even live in the gym because I'm never going to find training better than here, nowhere else. So, absolutely, I always going to prepare here. Powiedz mi, jesteś zawodnikiem generalnie no, znanym z Kimon. E, pomagasz zawodnikom MMA w Szwecji. Uważasz, że parter powinni poprawiać również w kimonach, czy trenować w nogi? Jakie jest twoje podejście do MMA? No, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I, my whole experience in, in, when it comes to grappling comes from BJJ. It's the sport I have done my whole life. I start really early, I'm still doing, I'm still active until nowadays. Training myself hard, search for, for improvement every day, competing against the best guys in the planet. So I always advise the MMA fighters that if they want to get good on the ground, they have to train BJJ. Because the guys with the best reactions on the ground is the BJJ fighters. And uh, so they can prove their thoughts recognizing situations, I always advise my guys to, to train with the gi too. But when it's getting close of the fights, you know, I always recommend that to don't use the gi. Because of the risk of get injury on the hand, the gi can get stuck or everything. And then we, we take the gi off. But out of the times, I mean off seasons, when they don't have any fight coming up, they, I, I recommend them to use the gi also so they can start you know, training a different way, it's, it's a different kind of sport, but also it's, you know, making the game on the ground for the MMA plus, you know, it's improvement all the time. So I always recommend every MMA fighter to train with the gi, but not when they are preparing for a fight in shortly time. And then it's the time when they should use the grappling more than no gi with the gloves so they can start to you know, adapt everything that they learn in BJJ to the game with the no gi. You know, all the space with the, with the hand without the gloves and then with the hand with the gloves is different. 
you know so it's many things to just adapt so that's why i think both complete each other ostatniej walce twojego podopiecznego Gustafsona z John Johnson było dużo kontrowersji przynajmniej w Polsce kto wygrał kto przegrał czy twoim zdaniem decyzja o zwycięstwie Johnsona była słuszna you know i i'm i'm a kind of person that in this kind of situation I'm, i can't say you know because everybody going to say that yeah he he's alexander grappling coach he going to say that alex won you know my opinion is that alex shocked the the world the whole world everybody was expecting john john to destroy him because john john is the champion you have been proved that he's very good guy the best one of the best in the business and uh, alex came there for the first time of his life he fight five rounds he showed the world that don't exist a human be invincible you know he showed that he also have his value and he's there to to fight for the title you know and the half risk decision is their decision you know everybody can have your own thoughts but in the end what count is what the half risk say alex lost we think that he didn't but the truth is that he lost you know he alex himself say that he he want to have a next time a next shot as going to happen and he going to try to do different you know his mind it's already passed of this moment that happened because after the judge decision there's nothing else you can do you know unless you have to just move on you know and alex it's dealing very good with this and uh, the next fight will be even more excited you know because now he has a lot more experience he's even more hungry he knows that nobody is invincible and we're going to work hard to this time really bring the belt to europe you know don't leave any kind of you know maybe or i don't know no are we going to go to kill or die that's it e, zaraz jak przyjechałeś do naszego miasta e, spostrzegłeś u nas znaczki b i rozpoznałeś z bagi skąd znasz bagiego yes you know baginski is a guy that you know i have a lot of respect for you know he been trained with us in brazil when we was braza you know tough training hard training you know never back down have his mind exactly the way it should be you know when it comes to to hard training development comp competitors you know and uh the work you have done here with all of you guys in poland the whole world knows you could see that as soon as i saw the logo i recognized and identified exactly where i was coming from you know in my in my in my old bjj career all the knowledge i have not just me but many other guys that i've been talking to you know we have a lot of respect for him is not a guy that it's tweaking his student is bringing the reality of being a, a a high level competitor inside of his gym with discipline dedication and hard work you know this is what exactly what i believe this is exactly the way i've been teached you know by my coaches and that's why i have a lot of respect for him i twoi nauczyciele oprócz tego że są świetnymi wychowawcami wiemy że wszyscy darzycie ich szacunkiem czy też potrafili taki respekt wzbudzać szacunek dyscyplinę wewnątrz swoich gymów yes you know to you know every time we we was training from the beginning with TDD you know we always was educated you know in a way that was preparing us not just for BJJ but also for outside life you know because if you if you are a guy that can't follow rules inside of your house inside of your gym you're not going to respect the rules on the streets or on your work or on your school or Ricardo Vieira start educating us to be professional to take the BJJ what we had as a competitor as a guy that follow rules inside the gym outside of the home but to 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 be more like something what we could live with you know like 
we could make the living of our life, support our family, make money, work with. So Ricardo was the guy that pushed us to the next level with the, all the, the discipline to respect, to be on time, know how to approach to people, be polite, you know, don't say or do things to anyone that you don't want for yourself. You know, it's a, exactly the basic things that we always heard by our family. But when you are a teenager or you are a guy that is growing up in the favela or in a rough situations, you, don't, you, you, you start to be disrespectful with the people that you have always close of you. What I mean is that many guys, when they grow up, they disrespect with the mother, with the father, you know, inside the home, and they learn by someone else. And I was learning always by my, my BJJ coaches, all the discipline I have to must have in life. I'm not saying that they make me become the perfect person in the planet, but they managed to change my mind. W takim razie, co czułeś, kiedy kupowałeś pas pierwszego ze swoich mistrzów? Yeah, this, you know, like I say, I, I have I have doing BJJ for many years. You know, I have been wo winning world championships, Brazilian nationals, Europeans. You know, I have been getting my black belt, changing belt, you know, all the other belts before the black belts. You know, I have been seeing students that start training with me without any perspective becoming world champion by you know, I make them believe, I make them train, I guide them and be successful. You know, and still, the, the, the thing with the belt with TDD was one of the, one of the moments that I, that I have been through in my life that I will never forget. You know, because TDD always been my, my friend since before BJJ, you know, when we was playing football, surfing, studying, you know, making trouble on the street, you know, fighting, everything comes before BJJ, you know, and see everything that he achieved with BJJ, he was the guy that put me to start to train BJJ with him, and I'm one of the guys that could follow all his career, you know, because I started training with him really early, and uh, I saw also he became the best guy of all the black belts. I have seen him win, you know, open class in Brazilian nationals when he fight against guys 30 kilos more than him. And he takes the guys like it was nothing. You know, I have seen him saying before a final of the world championships, yeah, I'm going to submit this guy with the triangle. And he go and do. You know, and also I saw his life change, you know, when he got all his problems in the U.S., he'd been in jail there, came back to Brazil, he wasn't the same guy anymore. I saw my friend, my master, my teacher go down to drugs, you know, and six years of his life, almost seven years, I saw his family also suffering because our family, it's also friends, you know. And all the people around him, because in the favela where we grew up, Terere always been the guy that, in BJJ, that always been the inspiration for everybody. And after this happened to him, you know, many guys stopped with the BJJ, start getting involved with the gangs, drugs, get killed. I lost many friends after this because they didn't have inspiration, somebody to look up to. I still was just a purple belt when everything started happening to Terere. You know, and see all this was very painful for me, you know, because that was the guy that make everything happen in my life and I was seeing his life going down deep and deep. And, you know, he got addicted in crack. Drug works in your body, in your system. You know, it's, it's really bad. You know, and I see that was, was really hard for me. And even though in none of the times when he was using drugs, when he was like with people like homeless on the street, 
I never turned my back to him. I never disrespected him. I never lied to him because I couldn't. You know, I always have in my mind the 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 the, the sure, the hundred percent sure that everything what I managed to achieve was this guy that make it happen. You know, and every time he asked me for money, if I has, I knew that he would use drug, but I couldn't say no because. I always thought that the money I have in my pocket belongs to him. He was the guy that believed in me before everyone. And then one day, I was, I was training at night, and I saw him in the hill of the favela after the training. After training. And then I met him there. You know, he was away like, 68 kilos, 65 kilos, you know. A guy that I always saw big, competing, strong, you know. Go through this situation. And then he's asking me for money. I say that I didn't have at the moment. Then he say, can you, you give me later? And I say, of course. I remember like it was today, you know. And then I went home. And then like, Two hours later, I heard he shout me at the door of the house. Then I went there, and he had a supermarket plastic bag on his hand. Then he said, I want to sell you something. Then I say, what's up? He said, yeah, look at this. He took his belt, you know, that I always saw he wear when he compete, when he teach. And he trains. He said, I want to sell you this. Because from all the guys that I've been training, you are the only one that managed to get this far. And you take as much as serious. And I know that you always respect me. Then I say, but I can't accept that. You know. Then he say, I don't have gear anymore. I not even want to train. So it's no reason for me to keep this. So the first one I offer to sell, it's you. Then I say, okay, how much you want it? And then he sell for me for five reais. In, I don't know how much is in euros, but it's like maximum two euros. He, then I say, of course, then I'm gonna take it. I gave him the money, even though I knew that he would use drugs, because it's exactly the price, the lowest price for a crack stone in Brazil. And then he took the money. When he turned it back, I say, you know, I'm going to give back your belt. But in my mind in this moment, I was sure that he would die or by the drug dealer's hand or by the police hand or by overdose of the drug. And I would go to his funeral and throw his belt when he would be dead there. And then he said, I'm not going to need this anymore. I went to buy a new drug. You know, I went back home and was looking at the belt and it was like a movie coming to my head, you know. Everything this guy has been educating me, everything I have seen this guy building up for our favela, for our people, for the BJJ community, for the whole sport, I, was, I just saw that it was over when this moment came. But then, you know, he was continue to go through all this and one day his family convinced him to go to rehab. He was going to, to the rehab clinic, everything. And one day I heard that he was back in training. Every time I was back in Brazil, I was having the opportunity to train with him. He was, of course, using medicines and Every rehab, it's a process, you know, sometimes he was going down again, back to the clinic, until he was out of the clinic and decided to compete again. When I saw that he was competing again, I was really happy. In none of the moment, I stopped and think about, shit, he's in my weight class and we are in different teams, you know. In my, my, in my mind, all the time, all, the only thing I have was that, shit, my friend is back. My 
Master is back. You know. I was happy. I went back to Brazil to prepare myself for the European Championship 2012. No, 2013. And uh, when I got to the favela, everybody was saying to me that Terere was supposed to compete at the Europeans. Then I not even was thinking about the weight class or anything, you know. I was doing my training, we talk, we hang out. You know, we, in none of the moment we talk about the competition. And then the time came to get back to Europe, go to Portugal and fight. But the list of the fights came up. The fighters came up. And everybody saw that me and he was in the same weight class. And then I said to myself that, you know, now I'm having the chance to give back his belt. And I say, I hope we don't meet in first fight. I hope for the final to be something even bigger. But if it be any other part, I knew myself that I wouldn't be able to fight him. You know, so the brackets come up. We met in the semifinal, but before of the, we meet each other, we had to fight different fighters before. He won his fights, I won my fights. The moment came, everybody was waiting for, you know, people was asking me all the time, what are you gonna do? You know, I didn't wanna open my mouth before the moment coming, because, you know, attitudes can tell more than words. And if you say something, and you know that people like to talk a lot, you know, so, I knew what I would do inside of my mind, inside of my heart, and I knew that would be the right thing to do, you know. So when the time came, I met him in the, in the place where we changed clothes. Then I have a talk with him, and I say, okay, how do you feel? Then he say, Alan, you know, I felt now I felt better because it was a long time without competing. The first fight is always really tense. I couldn't lose an up good, but now I warm up well and I feel good. Then I say, okay. I told him, I'm not gonna fight you. You know, today I have, I have the, one of the most happy moments in my life, in my career in BJJ, of having you back at the place where you, you wasn't supposed to never leave, you know. And uh, first, I'm not scared of you because you've been teaching me, educating me to never be scared of nobody when it comes to compete inside the mat. Everybody can be beaten, everybody can win. So I have my chance, so I'm gonna take my chance. So I'm not scared of you. Second, I'm not feeling sorry for you. I'm not choosing to don't fight you because I feel sorry for everything you went through. Because you went through, now you are back. Everything what happened, it's a passing. You learn by your mistakes and now you are back. That's what counts, you know. The reason why I'm not gonna fight you it's because I have a lot of respect for you as a person the person that put me in BJJ, the person that believed on me before everyone, the person that make all this happen in my life. So, I will never, ever have peace inside of myself if I fight you. But he said, but Alan, you have your sponsors, you have your coaches, they're not gonna be happy with this. But then I told him like this. If my sponsor wants me to continue to advertise their brand, they will understand. If my coaches tell me to fight you, he's given me the right to one day fight them. So they will understand. And for me, 
everything what we, we've been living, it's beyond the BJJ. It's not just this, you know. Our history start long time ago, when we not even train in BJJ, you know. So, I have to be honest with myself, I have to be truly with myself, so I can live with peace inside of myself. Because in the end of the day, it's me that put my head on the pillow, and I don't want to have bad conscience. Before I, I come with this decision, I have a personal talk with me. And I start to think to myself, 10 years from now, when I think about this day, how am I going to feel? So the answer was quickly, I'm going to feel happy. So what I'm doing now is not just the Alan Black Belt. It's the Alan that grow up with you, the Alan that respect you, the Alan that you build up. Build up for the whole world to be recognizing now. And the reason why I'm doing this is not because I want to promote myself. I don't need that. I'm just being a man and recognize everything you have done for me. And that's it. So then I could see, for the first time ever, I could see Terere have tears on his eyes. I never seen him cry or anything, but he got emotional at the moment. And he said for me, thank you very much for the opportunity that he's given me. You know, and all he wanted from that moment on was to make things different. So he, he recognized it, he knew that six years of his life, he was being a bad example for everyone. Six years of his life, he make his family cry, he make his mother suffering, his father suffering, and all he wanted was to make a difference. He knew also, he told me, that even though when he was the best guy, in some situation he was arrogant with people because he thought that he was the best. And, many, and he lost many friends because of this. And all he wanted was a chance to build up everything again and make a difference. So the moment came when they call our name. Everybody didn't know what would happen. So we went in and as we would supposed to fight each other, then I told the referee that we wouldn't fight. The referee raised his arm, gave the victory for him, and I took the belt and gave him back. And I told him, this belt is the belt you sold me for five reais to use drugs. This belt is yours, belongs to you. And I told you that I would give you back, but I never thought that would be here. So. In my mind, in this moment, what was going on was that everything I think, everything I, I try to achieve, God always gives me more. So I thought that I would give, first I thought that I, I want to train BJJ to beat people in the school when we play football. And then I start to win tournaments. And then I, I decide to train the BJJ, compete, so I could go one time to Sao Paulo, just so I could leave Rio de Janeiro, just go to another town, because Terere was always traveling. Today I live in Sweden, and I go all over the world because of BJJ. I was thinking and training hard you know, dedicating myself to win the world championship at least one time. Today I have been winning five. You know, I was always trying to find a way to do something, what I like to do, so I could make money to support my family in Brazil, support myself, support my kids. 
you know, I was thinking on doing many things until I found the BJJ. It's something what I love. Millionaire, I know I'm never going to be with this, but I'm happy every day to get up in the morning and come home at night, you know, and make my living by this. So at the moment I thought, I say to my friend, Terere, I'm going to give you back your belt. In my mind, he would die. And then I have the chance to give his belt back exactly at scen a scenario that he put me. And for him make me get to this level, many of his students, many of my friends, we lost during the journey, during all this journey. You know, some guys start, don't believe in BJJ anymore. Some guys got to jail, some guys got to kill. And I was one of those guys that Terere always believed that went until the end and been blessed to help him to have his motivation back, to be back in the thing that he always been done and was at the place that he was supposed to never leave. So this thing with the belt for Terere, it's something that for me, personal, it's one of the best things I have done in my life towards somebody else. But when I did this, I wasn't expecting nothing back. I was just having peace inside. But, and then when I start to understand everything, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't just give my belt back to my friend. I showed the whole world that you have to respect your coach. You have to respect your teacher. You know, you are a man in and out of the mat. Recognize things that people have done for you before so you can be where you are today. You know, show the whole world that your inside feeling as a human being, it's beyond just a gold medal in the tournament. Because you win the gold medal the year after, the one, the one that you remember is just you. But this action, People are going to talk about for 20, 30 years, every time they remember. So, you know, and when you do something like this, without expecting nothing back, you know, just because you know that is the right thing to do, there's no money in the world that can pay you for that. That's it. Historia good na filmu. A też dosyć no, zakończone radosnym, e, no, zakończenie radosne, ciężka historia. Ale Terere jest e, też twórcą twojego nickname. Możesz opowiedzieć tą historię na zakończenie. As we've been talking about Terere, you know, today the whole world, the BJJ community knows me as Finfo. You know, was exactly him that baptized me with this nickname. So the thing was that. You know, we have a, a children's game in the favela that calls one, two, three, three, four. So we're in the room before the training, you know, children's, you know, we play all the time before the coach coming to the class. And uh, somebody shout, one, two, three, three, four, everyone have to be quiet. The, you can't laugh. You can't make any sounds. If you do, everybody beat you up. So I always, I always have problem when everything is quiet, to keep myself quiet and looking at everybody. I always start to laugh. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't hold myself. And many times I was getting beat. And one of those times, Terere wasn't in the academy yet. As always, we've been playing. And then one guy just say one, two, three, three, four, and everybody was quiet. And I start to laugh. Everybody start to beat me. And somebody came with a Coca-Cola bottle pet and hit me on the head. Bah! But this guy, <laughs> he hit me with the hard part, the top one. He could hit me with the middle or the soft part, but I don't know what was going on. You know, kids, we don't understand the, the danger thing in those things. And then, 
pa, and I got a cut in the head. He started bleeding a lot, and everybody, shit, what happened, what happened? And then they came into the mat. And then, yes, man, what happened? Come here and then wash my head. Everything, and ask me, who did it? I said, I don't know. We, don't, we was playing, and this happened, and that's okay. And he said, that is not okay. You know, what if it was, you know, somewhere more danger and things worse could happen? What was you guys playing? Which kind of game is this that you play and get injured? Then I said, we was playing FIFA. four. But in the group was another guy that calls Alan also. Then he said, okay, what's doing what? FIFA. four, okay, from now on, we do like this. You are Alan FIFA, four, and this is no more Alan. Okay, and then when he said that, everybody started to laugh. I didn't like at the moment because I knew that this would be sticking on me for the rest of my life, you know. In the beginning, I, I wasn't happy with the nickname. You know, Fifo, Fifo, Fifo. My family also wasn't. But the worst thing you can do when somebody call you something, it show that you didn't like. Because then they're going to continue to call. So, like every other nickname couldn't be different with this. And everybody started calling me Fifo, Fifo. And People start knowing me as Finfo in the competition. Every time I compete, they start shouting Finfo, not Alain. And uh, yes, nowadays everybody knows Alain Finfo. Now I love the nickname. You know, it's part of me, never gonna leave. Even my family, some people call me Finfo. You know, and uh, yes, was Terry responsible for that? And now it is what it is. <laughs> okay, dzięki za rozmowę. Zapraszam na odrobinę wiedzy. So I, I'm the one that want to say thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you guys a little bit of my history, a little bit of you know things that have been going on, you know, as my in my career as a trainer, as a student in BJJ, no gi, now working with MMA fights, the ground part. You know, I really appreciate the opportunity, and yes, and uh, of course, the funny part in the beginning was very, very nice. It's something different, and of course, I'm looking forward for the next time being here with you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.